Hey guys, in this video, I would like to talk about a book by Gary Amol called Future of Management. Why did I choose this book? Uh, basically, I didn't understand management much, uh, how to look at it, and as a management student, we've come along with a lot of theories of how to manage people in a way of controlling, planning, and the other activities that come along the process. But Gary Hamill has certainly shown a point that all these are irreplaceable in some sort of sense. But on the other hand, there's a lot more in the art of management. What the author claims is that the management hasn't changed much and hasn't evolved in the past century or certainly in the past decades. So he's kind of uh, trying to push the new generation of managers into thinking differently about how to manage people. While the author doesn't say that uh, we should abandon the management as it was and that we should literally build new systems and uh, new, I don't know, hierarchies or, you know, stem off bureaucracy and stuff like that he argues that while these are all very much good techniques there is something that has changed a lot in the past few years a uh, few decades and that's basically that uh, it's not about the productivity of a capital or you know, of the machinery that you own it's more about the productivity of the people you have in the organization. Back in the day, there was a need for a lot of people to work with certain machinery. Nowadays, the machinery can operate itself. There is artificial intelligence, there are you know, CNC uh, computers, basically. So there's a lot that has changed and we don't need people in the organization just to take care of the machinery and just work with it. We need the people to be themselves, be engaged and solve the issues in a new and unforeseen way, which is the way you build some kind of a competitive advantage in today's world. So uh, without further ado, I would like to jump into the book itself and uh, walk you through some of the key points of the chapters and you know see what you what you think about it and feel free to challenge me and the ideas in the books in the first chapter or the first chapters of the book gary hamill tries to put in front an argument that management might be past it you know uh, past it peak it is certain that the landscape has changed a lot but should we you know strive for evolutionary change or should we strive for revolutionary change right the thing is we are on some s curve which you might know from innovations themselves there is a certain peak you know then certain fall off and this is just basically in the cycles the question is do we want to ride the same S-curve till basically the end of the management till the system kind of collapses? Or do we want to take a leap towards new style, maybe new viewpoints on the same art of management? Uh, throughout my studies of management, economics and uh, other areas, what I found out there's basically just one good definition of management and that's organizing people in a way so that they can achieve results or goals that would be unattainable if they just work in kind of sequence if you have 10 people inside an organization if their output whatever it might be software you know, hardware, uh, food, book, whatever, if the output of the group is 
just basically a sum of the outputs that all could do on their own, then there is no need for such an organization. But if the sum is greater than, let's say, 10 times 1 of the group of 10 people, and instead it's 12 or 15 instead of 10, that's why organizations exist. And historically, it was that way as well, because imagine Henry Ford building cars, right? So maybe put it into an example. If there is just a 10 people working towards the same goal and they could have achieved it one after another, let's say painting the house, if someone could do the front and the back side and the other person the sides on each other end, why would you then need to organize two or four people to do it at the same time? Because you as a client could basically order one, then the other, then the third, and then the fourth. You would not need to order the service as a whole to kind of complete that, right? It might be not the best uh, example, but it certainly is that way. And nowadays, what has changed a lot in the landscape is that people are not the necessary factor to just move the machinery and manipulate it. They are basically needed for problem solving and making the issues either non-existent in the first place or having solutions to them, right? So that has changed a lot. All right, let me finish the first, first part with a quote from Henry Ford. The quote says, whenever I ask for a pair of hands, why do they always come with a brain attached? And that's something that I would like you to meditate on and uh, really take it in because that was how traditional management was looking at people. I don't think that it is that they didn't like people or they just wanted them just for sole output but it's just the way that people were different in sense of uh, combination with machinery so you needed much more people to complete the same amount of work as today and basically as you can imagine working in an office you probably don't go to the work just because you have a pair of hands right your boss or your colleagues, they expect you to think about the issues. So that's what has changed. And with that being said, let's move to the part explaining how we can work with it. So let's move on. What is the goal based on Gary Hamill? We should strive to create organizations where structure and liberty coexists in some sense. So in other words, you have some structure to guide you towards the goal, towards the vision, towards the completion of something that you would probably not imagine yourself. And on the other hand, having the liberty of challenging the status quo, uh, doing things differently and coming up with better ideas and better solutions. So there's a lot to take from the traditional management. Uh, I would like to name things like cost management and planning, which basically are needed in a company. But is there anything we can change about that? Is there maybe different ways to plan things? Maybe not plan them out to really certain key details? Can we maybe have plans that are uh, more ambiguous? Maybe the plan is just to do what you're doing and doing it responsibly. And when everyone is engaged and responsible about the outcome of their work, isn't that maybe some kind of a plan that could work? It's really hard to say. And well, I can already see you challenging me, right? What is this guy talking about? Why should we not use plants or why should we do things differently? I don't think that we necessarily need to start building new organizations from scratch. But I am an advocate of making people more engaged inside the companies so they can bring the best to the work, to their life and 
just basically perform, which is what the organization needs or wants in the end, right? And you as a person, you want to perform as well. So the thing is, I don't advocate for shutting down the organizations and making them totally different. The only thing I'm advocating for is having people engaged and how to make them feel wanted inside a company and so they know that their role is crucial and that without them, the process might not work. So what are the challenges coming into your management in the 21st century? First thing first, it's accelerating pace of change, lower barriers to entry, growing ecosystems and uh, networks that are influencing the work, the people and other aspects of life. Digitalization and internet makes two things and uh, one of them is your clients are more informed. So you can't necessarily hide some, uh, some of the bits. And also your coworkers are much more informed about how to do stuff. So you can't just tell them that this way is the right way because it might not be. The product life cycles are shorter. Can you imagine having an iPhone for 10 years nowadays? Or maybe even having the same t-shirt for a few years? Some people just can't. Or it's not necessarily that you wear it off, but it's probably that you don't like it anymore. These things are great. And I love that there is a lot of produce that we can use and have an advantage of it and really make it pleasurable for us. But still, it's a key point to argue that the product life cycles are shortening. So as a company, you need to innovate much faster or make changes much faster. There is almost no cost of communication nowadays. What does that mean? Basically, it's not hard anymore to have subsidies around the world. And with that being said, do you really need an organization in the UK working with uh, only UK people? Or can you maybe transfer it to have some in the center of Europe, some in South America, some in, some in Southeast Asia, and maybe have the whole part of the world time zone wise connected? Just think about it how that has changed in the past 50 years or so. But what is the solution to these challenges, you may ask? And both me and Gary Hamill think that it's responsibility. Why responsibility, you might be asking. Basically, if everyone is responsible for the outcome, then there is probably much less of work being done for nothing and the strategy and the plans or whatever it is is much more meaningful because when everyone is responsible for the output uh, either be that they are financially awarded based on the profit of the company itself so basically the profit is somewhat distilled uh, throughout the ranks maybe everyone gets certain percent of the, pro uh, of the profit that might be a way but it's just a transactional way of having people responsible. What I think is a great idea to look at it is uh, an idea put forward by uh, Nassim Nicholas Taleb, which is uh, having skin in the game, right? This is a book that I'll probably have a video on as well. It's a process or a standpoint that you basically work, live and do everything knowing that you're engaged in stuff like that. So it's basically, you know that whatever you do is your responsibility and you have some power to change things in a way. Maybe this is really complex uh, point to argue and we'll have another video about it. But I think basically is with people being responsible for stuff, it makes it much easier to overcome the challenges. So basically, there is an argument in the book that 
people in managers only for context and information about the situation in the company and the rest is basically just overhead I don't necessarily agree with that because I think managers as uh, people as a position or as a job title or how to call it as a responsibility they should unlock the best in people and they should be able to engage the people in what they are doing right so I don't necessarily agree with this argument but from the traditional management standpoint if a manager was there only to control the people then I agree that we've taken responsibility on to the level of really the employees or the workers, the colleagues, not necessarily only the responsibility having uh, all of its parts on the management, then yes, I kind of agree that traditional managers would not be needed. So coming to the end of the ideas in the book itself. What are the challenges? So basically, the first one is how to build a democracy of ideas, uh, how to cultivate the imagination of people, and how to reallocate resources based on the first two points, basically. Because when there is a democracy of ideas, people want to do things differently and solve the issues differently. And with that existing, in a sense, you need to reallocate the resources you have because you just don't solve the issues with the same software maybe or the same tools or the same amount of people so basically that's why you need to reallocate them much more dynamically um, how do you aggregate the knowledge of the collective itself that's something that you can see a lot in HR management nowadays you have these knowledge sharing uh, events, knowledge sharing meetings, and it's more about having everyone on the same page, not necessarily on the same page, but letting people understand why the knowledge is necessary and why sharing it is needed. And one of the biggest challenges which I see is how to provide such opportunities to get involved for everyone in the company. How do you do that? That's a good question, right? How do you get everyone involved? And I think that everyone wants to get involved in some sense because they might just not be in the right organization, striving for different goal, different mission that they were aiming for. So uh, the changes are crucial. You need to make people engaged and involved in the decision making and in other parts as well and that's probably the only way how the new generations can manage in a sense that will be sustainable and with saying sustainable i don't necessarily mean plastic free i just mean that sustainable in a way that you can have a process around it that just doesn't fall when something changes. You just need to be shock resistant in a way. And that's what people can do when they are engaged and they are involved because they care for the company and the mission as well. And you need to accept that as a manager, you're not the only one with the right solution to things. You might not even have the right solution. So I don't want to challenge you in the sense that every manager is wrong and is not doing his part. I'm just saying that there is certain need of a shift in the decision-making power of sorts. And there is a lot of other books that uh, have great uh, examples and great ideas. Uh, that are somewhat circling around this, this issue. So with that being said, uh, I would like to thank you all for the attention you brought to this uh, video. I hope you liked the ideas forward. Certainly, I would love to know some feedback in the comment section. 
yeah, if you're interested in learning something new about books, ideas, theories, then feel free to subscribe to this channel and I will try to keep you engaged in the ideas and maybe we can discuss about the outcomes in the comment section below. So yeah, have a great rest of the day ahead and see you next time.